Are you using support and resistance in the most effective way? If not, I'm going to show you how it's done. Now, support and resistance really is the most basic and common form of technical analysis that's out there today. It's certainly one of the simplest to understand. It's possibly why it's one of the most effective approaches that many traders use in the markets today. But what I found over the 30 years or so that I've been trading, certainly the last 15 years since I've been on the screens, is that a lot of traders don't really know the best way to apply the theory of drawing support and resistance lines on their charts. Now, we've all read the books in the past that say that these lines should be drawn where price has been respected twice in the past, but I'm not really sure whether that is the best approach. In a few minutes, we're gonna get onto the chart, so I'm gonna show you exactly, um, exactly how I would draw support and resistance on my charts. But before we do, let me just give you a little definition of what support and resistance is. They're basically horizontal lines, horizontal lines drawn on the chart where price and therefore human nature has reacted in a certain way in the past. Now us as human beings, we have this inbuilt processor that likes to repeat itself. We do the same things on a daily routine because we did it the day before. We, had Christ we have Christmas every year because we had Christmas last year. Now this same human nature, this same human nature and approach that you see in everyday lives is reflected in the price charts as well. Now, support. Support basically is a horizontal line drawn where buyers overcome the sellers. So if the sellers are moving the markets down, buyers start to overcome the sellers and the trend starts to reverse, okay, and push the trend back up in the direction from which it came. Now, resistance found above support will be where the sellers come into the market and the sellers start to overpower the buyers and therefore push the market back down to where it came from. Now, it's important to note that drawing support and resistance lines, it's not an exact science. It takes a lot of screen time and there's various rules of thumbs that you need to follow. It's also important to note that these support and resistance lines, they're not insurmountable levels. If they were, then clearly there wouldn't be trends developing in the markets. These support and resistance lines are often challenged and sometimes broken in the case of trends. And it's this challenging period where we look to get into the trend, if you like, to follow that trend higher or lower indeed. Now there's two major types of support and resistance lines, and I like to classify these as the minor and the major. Now the minor support and resistance lines are basically where prices pause, pause in a longer term trend. And these pauses give us the potential entries. Often find the minor support and resistance lines on the lower time frames, like the, the 15 minute, the one hour, the four hour, and so forth. Now the major support and resistance lines levels, these are find, found on the higher time frame charts, like the, the, uh, the weekly, the, the daily, even uh, the monthly, more powerful out there as well. So these major support and resistance lines, these can indicate key reversals, key reversals of trends, again, on the higher timeframes. So now we're going to get onto the charts and we'll show you, I'll show you exactly you know, how I draw these on my charts in the minor and indeed the major levels. So when I first look at a price chart in order to plot support and resistance, I like to take the top-down analysis approach. So basically I look at the higher time period and then work my way down to the lower time period, plotting the support and resistance as we go using different colored coded lines so that I can easily identify which particular time period that support or resistance line was relevant to. Now, most of us, when we look at a price chart, will look at a candlestick chart. Candlestick charts shows us lots of information, as you know. So you've got the main body of the candlestick and the wicks either side. Now, the main body of the candlestick shows us where that uh, particular candle opened, where it closed, the highest price traded in that time period, and the lowest price. 
Now that's all very well, lots of great information on there. But not all that information is that relevant when plotting support and resistance, certainly as you go out to the higher time periods. For example, we don't know if this high up here, we don't know if that was one trade, one small trade in the thin market. We don't know if that was a flat finger. We don't know if this low down here was just one trade in thin liquidity. So it's not really showing us much information. What we want to deem from the, from the price chart is who had control of that time period. Were the buyers in control? Were the sellers in control? Showing us where the open was doesn't really give us an indication. What's important is the closing price. The closing price shows us who on balance won that particular time period. Who was the stronger of the two, the bulls or indeed the bears. So quite frankly, we don't need to see all this information. This information is not that relevant. What's relevant is this closing price. So when plotting support and resistance, I like to focus more on the closing price than anything else. Now, the best way to do that is the use of a line chart, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do and show you now. So this is the line chart on the euro dollar one month. Now what we're looking for, we're looking for key turning points. I'm not looking for the wicks, the highs and the lows, I'm looking for key turning points of these lines. You'll see there's, uh, there's turning points there, there's turning points there, there indeed, indeed back down here as well. So we're looking for these key levels for our support and resistance. And what we do, we draw our support and resistance lines through these levels. Now for the sake of this presentation, I'm just gonna uh, drew, draw in a few, and of course this is on the one month as well, so uh, some of them are gonna be quite far away, but you certainly put one in there. I'm gonna be using a red line for the monthly, uh, okay, and I'll be using a um, different colors for the different uh, time periods. So we'll put another one in there, and potentially another one in there as well. So I like to use different coding. Um, the red will be the monthly, the green will be the weekly, the daily will be the purple, of course you can choose whichever you wish as well. These turning points are key, key levels. Drop another one in there as well. Key levels. And when you go back to the candlestick chart, you'll see how important they are as well. They ignore the wicks, they ignore all this noise. It shows us where the consensus was in that particular time period. Now we've done the one month, we're gonna go down now and have a look at the weekly chart, the chart uh, time period below. So now we'll do exactly the same on the weekly. I'll be using a green line to plot my turning points on the weekly chart. There's a turning point there, certainly one back down here as well, and there's certainly a few back down here. Now, for the sake of this uh, presentation, I'm not gonna go through them all. Of course, we go back down quite a few points on that as well. Once we've done the weekly, we'll drop to the lower time frame, uh, which will be the daily, and we'll do exactly the same. Purple line goes in there, certainly down there as well, hit there twice. Again, drilling back to the candlestick charts, you'll see how important these lines are. Okay, they ignore the, ignore the wicks, that's where we closed, much more significant, as you will see. And we just keep going further down. Now looking at the four hour chart. Now I'll be using the black line for my four hour chart. And it is as simple as that. Now, once you've done that, you can safely go back to the time period that you're looking at, possibly the one hour chart, and start trading away. Now, on this line chart, on this chart, you will see the clearly marked levels of support and resistance relevant to all the time periods. Ignoring all the wicks, we're looking at all the time periods, easy identifiable. Of course, you can always scroll out to look at a particular period. If indeed it becomes relevant, if it's a monthly, you wanna see some price action, you can always scan out and look at that. But plotting your support and resistant lines levels using the uh, line chart is a far easier way to see the levels in, uh, with much, much more clarity and much more accuracy. You can see here this four hour chart here, it's been inspected a number of times, and indeed both at the bottom, um, uh, as support as well. This old support potentially now is gonna act as resistance on the way up. Look, I hope you found this useful. Um, if you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Uh, leave me a comment, I'd love to see the comments. I'll always get back to as many as I can. 
As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you do so and follow us on Instagram so you can see all the work that goes on behind the scenes here at forexsignals.com. Until the next video, thanks for tuning in and good luck.